Let's talk about it. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Dante Credo here on Talk My Credo with another video. I, you know what this is about. So let's let's go ahead and just get right into this. Uh, I ask if you guys, you know, support or like the content, please be sure to drop a like, comment. Let's let's have a conversation about this and consider subscribing, slap that notification bell and let's uh, continue growing this community. But for those who may be living under a rock right now, Minneapolis is uh, particularly the Brooklyn Center area is uh, up in arms right now with the killing of Dante Wright. Uh, Dante Wright was pulled over for a, a traffic violation and ended up in a tussle with cops and was shot. Uh, was able to drive off, but later crashed into another vehicle where uh, he succumbed to his injuries. And of course, right on cue, it becomes politicized. It is extremely polarized. And you just wonder what the hell is going on right now. So this is what we're going to attempt to do. We're going to tell the truth. The actual truth, the full non-liberal, non-conservative truth. Here are the facts. So before we get started, let's just go ahead and watch what happened. I'm sure you probably have already seen what happened, but let's watch and um, let's get a, a correct frame of context. So let's go. As you can hear, the officer, while struggling with Mr. Wright, shouts, Taser, Taser, several times. That is part of the officer's training prior to deploying a Taser, which is a less lethal device. That is done to make her partners aware, as well as the subject, that a Taser deployment will be imminent. During this encounter, however, the officer drew their handgun instead of their Taser. For informational purposes, we train with our handguns on our dominant side, and our taser on our weak side. So if you're right-handed, you carry your firearm on your right side and you carry your taser on the left. This is done purposefully and is trained. As I watch the video and listen to the officer's commands, it is my belief that the officer had the intention to deploy their taser, but instead shot Mr. Wright with a single bullet. This appears to me, from what I viewed and the officer's reaction and distress immediately after, that this was an accidental discharge that resulted in the tragic death of Mr. Wright. I have asked the BCA to conduct an independent investigation into the shooting and death. Once they are completed, I expect they will submit their findings, independent of me, to the appropriate authorities, the appropriate attorneys that will, that will look and review this case. So, um, now let's, let's put the pieces together. Um, Is this is this is just crazy. There's just been messed up things all the way around. So let's put into context of what happened. Um, first of all, the um, the police pulled over Dante Wright 
because of an expired license plate. His tags were expired. Um, there are people that are already, you know, trying to demonize him for having an expired license plate. And I, I just think that, first of all, you guys need to shut the hell up. First of all, you know, oh, you irresponsible. You don't take care of your business. If you would have been a responsible adult, then this never would have happened. Like, like shut up, shut up. It's like, how many times have all of us maybe it slipped this mind? Or the fact that if I got to pay bills and these bills are due, I just don't have enough to pay right now. So I still got to go to work and do what I need to do. So I'm, I'm, okay, I'm just going to hope for the best. Let's just be honest. This is no way trying to defend, but at the same time, this is to also offer context for y'all just so quick to try to demonize the victim to justify why he may deserve what happened to him. Like, chill out. Furthermore, do y'all not understand the delay that is happening in the DMV right now when it comes to getting taxed? He could have actually paid for it and got all of his stuff set up. But there is literally a two to three month backlog with getting tags right now. There's a crazy delay. Have you thought of that? Have you considered that? Nah, nah. Let, we we got to find a way to justify why this dude deserved to be killed. Because, hey, you know, you play stupid games, win stupid prizes. That's that's what you dummies like to do, right? Like, th th there's things that y'all don't even consider. Y'all just, how does this fit my narrative? How does this fit my talking point? Y'all was stupid. So with that being said, why aren't the the police officers involved to even be aware of, should I even pull this person over for an expired tag or, or, or what? Because there is such a delay in getting them. But hey, that's besides the point. But the fact of the matter is the police pulled him over because of an expired license plate. While this was happening, he was on the phone with his mother, which he assumed or alleged that they pulled him over because of air freshener that was in his car, right? Um, so that's what he's speculating with his mom, but they actually pulled him over for an expired license tag. While they run his tag, they realize that there's an outstanding warrant for his arrest. So let's get started with that because it's at that point where we see George Floyd all over again. Well, he's a criminal. He deserved it. And, you know, you play stupid games, win stupid prizes, you know, all, all of that stuff. And we're going to get into the other narrative as well once we get these things out of the way. So let's talk about these warrants. So what they're trying to do to Dante Wright is, as we all know, paint him in a particular light that would suggest that his death was completely justified and it's nothing that we should worry about or talk about because he had it coming. So they highlight his lengthy criminal history to do so. So let's get the chop in this fable. Let's check the receipts and let's see what's going on here. So his criminal history started back in August, 2019 around this time it was 18, 19 doing what stupid teenagers do. He gets, gets hit for weed and a, a disorderly conduct thing. So both deemed, uh, petty misdemeanors that he pled guilty to was fined, sent on his way in December, 2019 is where things get a bit disturbing, which, Stupid teenagers turn into stupid adults type of thing where he was arrested for and accused of armed robbery and assault. The quick story behind that is he went to party at a girl's apartment. They didn't have a ride home. So the girl let them crash on the floor. The next day, the girl and the roommate went to get money to pay the rent for their apartment. Dante Wright and his friend saw this, saw it as an opportunity, pulled out his gun, assaulted her, took the money. And then that's that. So he was arrested for that, bailed out, released pending trial. And the conditions of his release were, you know, of course, you can't have a gun or ammunition and you must maintain communication with your PO. You know, kind of 
we know how this works, right? In June 2020, he kind of messes that up. He gets caught with a gun and he flees police. He, he you know, runs from the cops. So that release order was revoked. A warrant was issued. He was arrested. In September, he bailed out. So from that point on, you see that he receives a number of court hearing notices and messages that are, are mailed to his uh, place of residence that he attends. Uh, one was actually set for a particular date, but it was changed to Zoom, which he attended all of those. And upon each hearing, he was notified of the next hearing. But as you see at the very end, that very last one that was mailed out, it was mistakenly mailed. It was sent to a, a bad address. And what that means, I'm going to put this up here on the screen. Uh, if you see here, now this is where my expertise comes in because, you know, I work at a post office. So what you see here is no such number. So what this means is how they addressed it, like th this address doesn't exist. So say if Dante lived on 14 Jones Street, they addressed it to 17 Jones Street, but there's no such you know what I'm saying? There's no such number. There's not a 17 Jones Street. So that's what happened with this last notice. The last notice was sent out to the wrong address. It was sent back as a bad address. He missed the hearing. A warrant was issued. So now this brings us all the way up to the actual incident of the cops. They pulled him over for an expired tag. They see this warrant that was issued. So they go to arrest him. Um, that brings us to this lady here that screams taser, intends to tase him, but doesn't realize she's holding a gun. Now that's a Glock, right? I never held a taser before. So, but I would imagine just a taser would not be as heavy as a Glock. Glocks are pretty heavy. I wouldn't imagine that that would feel the same, but she has a gun right to the chest, point blank. It's a wrap. Now, of course, looking at the video, she's surprised. She drops the gun. Uh, as you see, and she's like, oh my God, I shot him, right? And he drives off and so on, so on and so forth. But the narrative now is he deserved it. He was resisting arrest. I'm going to play a particular clip of one of these pundits that is spewing this particular narrative. So you see exactly what I'm talking about here as to why I'm trying to be as thorough as I can with actual fact. Right. And I just find it sad that if I can do this, this took me maybe 30, 45 minutes to collect all this information. But you have people at corporations, corporate news outlets that doesn't do like what happened to journalism. Uh, but we're going to take a quick look at that and let's see how this thing works. And um, I, I just, I just want to show this dude here because a lot of you may know who he is. So let's see. <laughs> um, this is, Political grifter Terrence Williams. Um, that's basically all I can say that doesn't go into a, uh, an entirely different direction. Political grifter Terrence Williams. This is what he had to say. They know good and well the police did not pull this man over and arrest him for having air freshener hanging in his car. They come up with so many lies. They come up with so many outrageous lies. The man had a warrant out for his arrest. And I'm not saying he should have been killed. I'm not saying he should have been shot at all just because he had a warrant. The man resisted arrest. Let's just stop it right there. And, um, yeah, you, you already see. You already see the BS, right? So the narrative is, well, no, they stopped him because he had a warrant. 
He, he's a known criminal. They stopped him. They intended to arrest him. And they're trying to lie and act like he was this innocent victim because he, he was stopped because they had air freshener hanging in his rear view mirror. You already see the talking points, right? I'm not saying he deserved to die, but you resisted arrest. So, All right, let's see if he says anything that's actually intelligent. He had a warrant out for his arrest. Let's let's stop because that's not why they stopped him. They did not stop Dante Wright because he had a warrant out for his arrest. They stopped him because he had an expired license tag. It wasn't until they ran the tag to find out that he had a warrant then. That's not why they stopped him. Again, this took me 30 to 45 minutes to get all of this information. But y'all just grab your phones and start talking shit that you don't know what you're talking about. Like George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Trayvon Martin, all of these things, Ken and Hennett, all of these instances where y'all just start talking and don't know facts, don't know the context of what happened. And then things get so divided because there's information that's being omitted or you just don't know, whatever the case may be. Like, I need y'all to chill out. But this dude is him. I'm, I'm going to show you another here in a second. It's, it's absolutely stupid. It's absolutely stupid. I, I cannot believe these people get the type of following that they do for being so dishonest and so lazy. And his family and his friends are saying he was pulled over because a police officer saw air freshener hanging in his car. All right, this goes on for like three minutes. I'm not even a minute in. Yes, Dante Wright, when he was pulled over, got on the phone talking to his mom and he thought that he was pulled over because of air freshener hanging in his thing. Now, it could be that that's what they said. That, well, by the way, you also have air freshener. not supposed to have that up. So that's what. So, yeah, according to Dante Wright and his perspective, that's what happened. That's not the reason you were stopped. We, we get that. We understand that. But he goes on for three whole minutes. I, 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 I don't even know if I want to listen to anything else he has to say. Child, this got to be the stupidest crap I ever heard. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to listen to this. Yeah, he's trash. Um, is, do y'all see? how these raccoons work just all child I, I don't even know what you're talking about you he, throw them air freshener and I really you see how wild they act this is called a minstrel show that's what they used to do back in the day when they would negatively stereotype black people when they would depict them in blackface like Jim Crow, that was like a minstrel character. Act exactly like this, just wild and all ostentation and a little bit feminine. But I'm going to show you another one. Uh, this is from another person by the name of Brandon Tatum. He's another grifter who is like really popular with uh, his particular base. Um, this is this is what he had to say, and I'm, I'm gonna pull it up just here in a second. So, um. she shouldn't be a police officer. So this is so this is Brandon Tatum, and this is what he had to say in regards to the woman here, um, and the woman who actually shot shot Dante Wright. She shouldn't be a police officer. I don't know if she's a affirmative action hire or what. 
He don't have his gun out. He never had his gun out. Why is she confusing a gun with the taser? It looked like she had a Glock. We had a Glock 22. That gun is heavy. Is nowhere near the feel and heaviness of a taser. She should never be a police officer ever again. However, I don't believe that she should be charged with a crime because it was unintentional. It was an accident. And she, she wholeheartedly believes she had a taser in her hand, but it was an accident. And this was all started from Dante Wright. He perpetuated, instigated a, 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 a happening to occur. This is all his fault up until the point she shoots him. And that was her fault, but he instigated and caused all of this stuff to happen. So I believe personally that she shouldn't be charged, but she should never be a police officer ever again. Yeah. So you, you see how these people get the platform that they do, right? Be of a particular hue, but speak another particular basis talking points. You're in there. And there's a lot of other people that starting to do the same, like your Sari Kim's of the world. Right. So notice he said something very interesting. He said, I don't know if this was an affirmative action hire. Um, I'm not even, I'm, I'm not quite sure exactly what he meant by that because normally that talking point is used for black people who get in certain positions and they say, well, that was an affirmative action hire. I don't know if he knew who this woman was. I don't know if he knew like that. This was a white lady. The person that he's talking about when he wasn't sure if this was affirmative action hire was this lady. Her name is uh, Kim Potter. He talks as if she's a rookie, right? But she's been on the force for 26 years. She's actually the president of the Brooklyn center police department. The union president. So she's been around for a while. So then you kind of wonder how in the world did you mistake and confuse a taser for a gun? Again, I never held a taser. I, I just assumed that it's lighter than a Glock. Now I've held Glocks before. My preference is a Glock 19, but anyway, uh, the Glock 17 is pretty good. 17, 19. Um, so she shot him. But even in his case, he feels that, you know what? She shouldn't be charged because it was an accident. It was an accident. For civilians, when you accidentally kill someone, you're still a charged. That's called manslaughter. But this person, Brandon Tatum, was a cop for five years. How come you do not know that? Unless this is a back the blue, blue lives matter type thing. Huh? Well, that's that for, for that side. So the other side is of course, BLM, the organization is out and about. There's protests and, and riots and stuff is going on. There's looting and rioting and stuff that's happening all over again. And, you know, it's basically under the guise of these police officers are racist. They targeted this man. They, you know, brutalized him. They killed him without regard. And it's white supremacy. Um, I, I don't believe. I don't believe that. I don't believe that to be true. I think that this was a situation where a lot of things went wrong and a lot of bad decisions were made. A lot of, there was a, a lot of negligence in this situation. I, it's, it's so effed up because a lot of things could have been prevented. Not even talking about the, well, he shouldn't resist the arrest. I'm not even talking about that. But there's so many things that could have happened and should have happened that didn't and it resulted in someone losing their life. Regardless of his quote-unquote criminal history. Um, but the narrative is, of course, that Kim Potter, that she is a race soldier, um, you know, agent of the state that is sworn 
in to dismantle and destroy the black community. Um, you know, the warrant that they mentioned that, uh, that he had, they're saying that, well, the warrant that they had was over unpaid fines, you know, $346, uh, in unpaid fines that wasn't paid that was given out during the pandemic that, you know, he just wasn't able to pay. No one was able to pay because the country was shut down, but they issued this warrant anyway. And, you know, that's all his life was worth. $346. You know, that, that type of thing. And do I believe that Kim Potter, I believe I said her name, right? Do, do I think she's racist? No. Do I think is that cut and dry? No, I think that, yes, this was an accident. And until I see evidence to the contrary, I believe this was an accident. An accident that she should be held accountable for. She should be held accountable for this. This is manslaughter. It's manslaughter. And I don't think that it should be charged to go any other way. She should serve the consequences of killing a man, of killing a person. It was, it was accidental, but either way, it, he didn't have to die. Yes, he was resisting arrest and all of that. Yes, he was. And this is, this is my plea. And I, I already know how it was most likely going to be received, but just listen. At some point, we got to survive. We got to survive. In those particular instances, just please just survive. I know it's a, a case by case basis when it comes to the, the uh, second lieutenant, Karen uh, Nazario. When they're like, well, you should have complied. Say, I, I wouldn't have gotten out of my car in that instance. But in the instance where you already out of the car, they're cuffing you and think you're surrounded by three cops. Just survive, man. Survive. Survive. Just li live to see another day. Mothers. Fathers. Because, of course, I didn't put the clip in, but Brandon Tatum was like, well, where was his father? <laughs> I think the other clown did the same thing, too. Um. It's a hard thing to have these type of conversations, but they have to be had. We have to be had. We keep saying, let this be the last one. Let this be the last one. Let this be the last one. We're speaking towards people that we've lost throughout the years. We cannot say that let this be the last one without us changing. We, we got to. We cannot continue to say, let this person be the last one. We ourselves are going to have to change as well. We're going to have to prepare our sons and daughters a lot better than what we're doing. We can't just say it's the white man and it's white supremacy and then not prepare or have any tactic or agenda to fight it. It's like we're just saying, well, it's white supremacy. Then we go on out into the world with nothing, no knowledge, no. I just, I feel like at one point do we finally get the lesson? And it's not don't fight the cop, don't resist the rest. No, that's not the lesson here. The lesson here is. We know what we're dealing with. At what point? Because here's here's something. I'm gonna see if I can find it. Here's something this is that house Minister Lewis. I was in my little Chevrolet driving ago. back to Boston, and the police in Philadelphia stopped me. Mm -hmm. It was about maybe one or two in the morning. 
And when he came to the car, he said, um, did you know you ran a light? I mean, a stop sign? This is his attitude. Yeah. Yeah. I said, oh, no, sir, I didn't know. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see it. Give me your license and your registration. Yes, sir. I went in and gave it to him. Where are you going? I answered. He started looking in my glove box in the car. And there was a recording of my song, A White Man's Heaven is a Black Man's Hell. <laughs> I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> After he went in the glove box, he didn't go too far. I said, if you wish to, you may search the car if you want, you know. He said, get out. <laughs> I stood on the sidewalk. I said, would you like me to open the trunk? Mm -hmm. He said, get on the sidewalk. You're too GD helpful. <laughs> but I yeah. knew that man was not going to kill me on that street <laughs> that night. I handled him with the wisdom of God. You know, when you think you know, like my brother said, you yeah. know, see, I, I told him my yeah. rights. Yeah. Let me tell you something, brother. Yeah. See, smart people yeah. may know your rights, but you don't know the nature of the enemy that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Justice Taney, I mm -hmm. think it was, he said, ain't no black man got no right mm -hmm. that a white man is bound to respect. And that's real. So you can quote your rights. Sometimes they'll say, oh, this is a smart one. Right. But other times they say, he's just an uppity nigga, and we'll get a chance and we'll take him down. So, brother, you got to be wise that's right. as the serpent that's right. and humble as the dove and sometime you make it through but if there comes a time when now your life is threatened fight like hell to preserve and protect your life because it's the only life that you got i'm not telling you to attack a policeman respect the policeman respect the law yes but when the law disrespects and desires to kill you that's the only life we got then fight but like basically hell he's saying listen survive survive teach your child to survive there's no point to fight bro there's no point in fighting just yeah you're going to get in trouble there's going to be some consequences there. But survive. We got to teach our children, y'all. We got to better prepare our youth and our children out here, man. I And that's what I think we as a community are failing. We're sending our children out here ill-prepared, ill-equipped to deal with what we say we're dealing with. And then it happens and you see it happen time and time and time and time again. And these people on this side is going to profit off of your pain and buy million dollar houses in white neighborhoods. And you're stuck with what? While these people over here is going to disrespect the seed that you lost. Because they brought it on themselves. They're nothing but criminals. When are we going to adjust and, and make change to the game? Because there's nobody losing but us. We're the only ones losing. These people over here that's race baiting and playing the race game, making all types of money off of you. These people over here don't give a fuck about you anyway. So you're nothing more than a talking point to them. See, I told y'all, criminal. When are we going to change? We got to change the game. That's it, man. Look, y'all let me know what you think. I know this video is a little long. If you watch it this long, thank you so much for watching it. Please drop a like, comment, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell, share the video. Um, nobody's losing but us, y'all. Nobody's losing but us. 
It's your boy Dante Credo here. Peace out, y'all.